is Cena Radio, Windsor, Detroit, on the CINA 102.3 app at CINAFM.com, on TuneIn, on Smart Speaker, and at 102.3 FM. Cena Radio, every device, everywhere. The following program does not necessarily reflect the opinions of the management, staff, or advertisers of Cena Radio. كل مرة بنتلاقى بحدا بيسألنا شو الأخبار تابعونا كل نهار أربعة الساعة ثلاثة بنتناقش بنتحاور بنسلط الضوء على أهم المواضيع اللي بتخصنا كلنا بتجرد وموضوعية برنامج شو الأخبار مع حسين هاشم كل نهار أربعة الساعة ثلاثة على راديو سينا 102.3 FM تابعونا لتعرفوا شو الأخبار مستمعينا من راديو سينا 102.3 اف ام معكم حسين هاشم على الهواء مباشره بحلقه جديده من برنامج واتساب شو الاخبار اللي بينعرض عليكم كل نهار اربعاء من الساعه 3 للساعه 4 من اسير راديو سينا وعلى صفحتنا على الفيسبوك واتساب ميديا نتورك ببدايه حلقتنا بنحب نتشكر السبونسرز تبع الواتساب ميديا نتورك على السوشيال ميديا اللي هن المحامي حميد جروب ستيت بلاننج اند بروبيت اتورني ابلايد مودرن هاوس دكتور مهزيمه بيج ريس كويك لوب اون اوكمان اند فورد رود اند ديربون and uh, ever fresh white market اللي هن على انارجل تريل اسوي البلد فل شكرا لكم على دعمكم لنا على السوشيال ميديا كمان ببدايه الحلقه بنحب نقدم uh, بتعازينا اور سنسير كونتاسنس تو ذا بيس فاميلي اند تو ذا انتاير كوميونتي فور ذس بيج لاس اكيد كان صدمه كبيره علينا كلنا كان فيري بيج شوك ان شاء الله تكون خدمت الاحزان على الجاليه وخدمت الاحزان على عائله عباس يا رب فمصاب كان اليم مصاب كان كثير كبير بنتمنى uh, منكم uh, تقرون الفاتحه تخلوهم بصلواتكم تخلوهم بدعائكم لهيدي العائله اللي هن عم بيمرقوا بوقت صعب هلا حاليا فتحياتنا لكم جميعا آه بالنسبه للي بيحبوا آه يشاركوا بحلقتنا اليوم ارقام آه التليفونات من ديترويت هن 313-769-6666 ومن وينزر كندا 519-256-1023 فمن ديترويت 313-769-6666 ومن وينزر كندا 519-256-1023 نتمنى انه تتابعونا على السوشيال ميديا الحلقه عم تنعرض صوت وصوره على السوشيال ميديا على الفيسبوك تبعنا بس بتكتبوا واتساب ميديا نتورك وبتطلع لكم الصفحه وفيكم تشوفوا اللايف فيديو الحلقه مباشره مع ضيوفنا اللي هن نحن عندنا قسمين اليوم بالحلقه بالقسم الاول من الحلقه معنا الدكتور حسين سعد والدكتور محمد سعد من ميشيغان اورثوبيدك سبيشالست بديربون رح نتحدث عن الاورثوبيدك سيرجري رح نتحدث عنهم شخصيا دكتور حسين دكتور محمد رح يكونوا معنا بحلقات متعدده بالمستقبل حبينا نعرف نعرفكم عليهم ونعرفكم على الاختصاص اللي هن عم بيقوموا فيه البراكتس تبعهم التريننج تبعهم الباك جراوند تبعهم لانه هن اسم الله ذا وان ونز اوف ذا ليدنج صراحه بهيدا المجال ان ذا فيلد اوف اورثوبيدك سيرجري بالقسم الثاني من الحلقه رح نتحدث عن التاكس فبالقسم الاول عم نتحدث موضوع طبي بالقسم الثاني رح نتحدث عن التاكسز وما التاكسز فبالقسم الثاني وي ورك توجذر وي ورك توجذر رايت فبالقسم الثاني من الحلقه رح يكون موضوعنا عن الـ عن التاكسز هل يا ترى بسبب الجفرمنت شت داون رح يصير في تاخر بالتاكس ريتيرن ولا لا وكل وبعض الاخطاء اللي بتصير بالتاكسز لما بتكون عم بتعبوا على تاكس وغير كثير شغلات خاصه بالموضوع الحسابات وهيك شيء فتابعونا حلقه كثير رح تكون شيئه رح نبلش حلقتنا اليوم مع ضيوفنا الموجودين معنا بالاستديو هلا حاليا مثل ما بنعمل على طول على الراديو بنحكي قد ما فينا بالعربي انا بترجم والضيوف تبعنا بيحكوا بالانجليزي فانا اي تراي ماي بيست تو ترانسليت لانه شوي على الراديو في مستمعين اكثر بالعربي على فيسبوك نحن ما عندنا مشكله لانه على طول في مستمعين اكثر باللغه الانجليزيه فوي تراي تو كفر both ends of those words of <laughs> welcome to the show uh, dr hassan and dr muhammad thanks thanks for having um hey as an intro uh, who's who's dr hassan saad and dr muhammad saad you each one of you introduce yourself so i'm hassan i'm the older brother um you know muhammad and i and our whole family were born and raised um we're first generation here our parents were born back home in lebanon um we're from here went to school here went to public schools in dearborn Um, you know, went to McDonald School, Lowry School, Fortson High School, graduated from there. I went on to the University of Michigan, got a pre-medical degree, and then I went to Wayne State University for my medical school. Nice. And then I went to uh, complete an orthopedic surgery residency, which is basically five years of training in orthopedics, which is a surgeon of the musculoskeletal system. So basically anything except the face, the brain, and the belly basically okay. is what we operate on so we're kind of all over the body how, how long did, does it take to to finish uh... yeah so from high school it was five years of training in okay. orthopedic surgery which is that's you know it's actually from high school you go four years of undergraduate studies and then five years of orthopedic surgery study 
and then one year of fellowship. So four years of medical school. And four years of, I forgot the medical school. Yeah, four years. <laughs> 14, so it's 15 years 14 years, years <laughs> total 14 training. Years, yeah. Wow. So after, yeah, um, so after residency at Beaumont in orthopedics, we both chose to do a subspecialty, okay. which is extra training in a field of orthopedic surgery. And then um, that's a one-year fellowship. So I went on to the Cleveland Clinic and did a sports medicine fellowship and then came back to Dearborn to be with, with our community, which is, you know, a wonderful community. Nice. And, uh, How about you? Uh, that was a pretty long introduction. I think simply put, I'm Hassan's brother. Huh. That's, uh, I think. <laughs> you're, uh, the, you're the younger one, right? I am. I'm the youngest of uh, the could, youngest of the boys. Did he I, convince you to go into the same field, or what? How, uh, how, how did it happen? Yeah, two no, brothers, Yankton Echmeir, was in the same field. It's uh, no, actually, it was, uh, it was quite the opposite. My entire life, uh, Hassan and I have always bucked uh, mm. a little bit, always bone heads, which is okay. what you expect out of uh, two brothers. But we're, uh, I'm one of four. I'm the third boy. So okay. there's a, uh, a boy between Hassan and I, and I have a younger sister. Both okay. of them are dentists. Uh, they're the smarter of the two. But uh, I, okay. when, I was, when I was in medical school, I kind of had an idea of what I want to do. Not really, but I, I saw Hassan going through his process. And if anybody knows Hassan, they know anything Hassan does is the best. You know, nice. Dearborn's the best city in the world. Okay. and. Forts and high school is the best high school in the world. And, and <laughs> Hopefully we don't have Hadad Salman. No, I'm sorry. It's okay. We love all of Dearborn. We love everyone. Yeah. What I'm saying is that Hassan makes everything. This rivalry right. between two high schools. Of course. But Hassan makes everything beautiful, makes everything great. And you want to, when somebody. You want to follow his footsteps. Exactly. When somebody shows you something, you, you at least keep an open mind to it. So I kept an open mind. And he, you know, he paved the path. And he was a trailblazer, especially in our community as young Arab American males going through this process and he was one of the first people to enter the orthopedic yeah. department. Actually, he was the first orthopedic uh, Arab American orthopedic resident at William Beaumont Hospital. Oh, wow. I feel that they've never seen an Arab American orthopedic resident. He was there, so. Why we don't he, have so many? I mean, why, what's the reason? It's, it's, you know, being a surgeon, people have the stigma of it's a very, very difficult lifestyle and it's a very difficult life and you don't have a family life. We, we have I, I, you can pick and choose, you know, how much you want to work, how hard you want to work, and, and you can kind of do that. So I chose family life and all that stuff for her, so I kind of tamed my hours in order to accommodate for that. Um, but, you know, the stigma of a surgeon is you're working all night, you're sleeping in the hospital all okay. the time, your training is very difficult, and it is. It is, I mean, But you difficult. pick and choose how you want to live that life. So, okay. you know, back to your question of, no, our family never really told us, you know, you have to be a doctor, you have to be a dentist. I think, I mean, by the way, and especially for Arab, and you know, usually nahna, we want to be doctors. We yeah. want to always strive to the yeah. best, to be honest with you. In yeah. general, anyone want to strive to the best, but nahna, anna, yaha, anna, 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 and we, we, especially for our parents, they want the best for their kids. So yeah, I mean, my father, they think the best yeah. for their kids is doctor or lawyer or something That's, my father yeah. and mother both came here both educated here both went to school here both I, I feel gave up everything for their children to be educated and that's all they really asked is we kind of pursue education to the highest level that we can and when we didn't think we could they were our cheerleaders telling us no you could do better and you could do more and alhamdulillah all, all of us did and like Muhammad said we're you know Muhammad and I are like the outliers in our family we're like the two <laughs> orthopedic surgeons I mean Khale Hakim Isnin uh, you know, Hayy Hakim Isnin, Ikhti Hakim Isnin, and so we're yeah, like, yeah. So everyone almost in the family are, so are, 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 as a dentist. <laughs> yeah, everybody, we're like in a, a family of dentists, and we're the two outlying orthopedic surgeons. But, you know, in this field, you can pick and choose how much you want to work. You know, I'm a sports surgeon, so I do okay. mostly outpatient, elective, shoulder, knee surgery, occasional fracture work. Muhammad is a... You know, he likes to do everything. He likes to operate all over the body. He likes to take trauma call at three different hospitals. He doesn't mind the unknown. Uh, are you both married? Alhamdulillah, I'm married with two kids. He's married with two and one any day. Yeah, and two weeks away. I'll have oh, my nice. third child. Uh, 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 that's up in the air, but I don't know. If the mom, I'm not sure if she's talking about the baby. Ah, I'm not going to answer the mom. I'm not going to answer the I'm not answering those kind of questions. This is a strictly professional conversation. Ah, hello, ya Muhammad. This is strictly a professional uh, uh, interview. It happened to me, so I don't want to go. Muhammad, I was looking at your profile, and yes. I know I know you, Alhamdulillah, very well from you know we've never met personally, of but I, I've been you know watching your work, Smalla. Um, 
you've been with the Tigers, you've been with the Pistons, you've done some stuff with the wing, Red Wings. So yes. Tell us about that part of your uh, your professional life. Yeah, so that's no different than most fellowships. When people go into a fellowship year, you know, Hassan actually worked with uh, the Cleveland Indians, the Cleveland nice. Browns, and the Cleveland. And in a fellowship, you have the opportunity to work with professional teams and get the insight on what it takes to be a professional team physician. There are dedicated team physicians to those teams, but as a fellow, about one of three fellows, you rotate through the Detroit Professional Sports. I did my sports fellowship at the Detroit Medical Center. Okay. So they give you the opportunity to work with those professional athletes. You're, you're a member of a team taking care of a, uh, you know, these elite athletes. And it's a nice little change to okay. uh, what you do on a daily basis. But uh, our, my true love is, is not really one of, uh, I, I appreciate taking care of them, and it was nice being a part of it. My true love is taking care of everyday people. It's okay. the, it's very, very different. You know, you're dealing with high-level athletes, and everything is, uh, uh, is is very different, to say okay. the least. I'll let, to, to say somebody with that kind of education and that kind of specialty, um, you would say they go, for example, to open an office like for downtown Detroit or an area where probably it's more like high-level area, high just to say, just to say. Why did you guys decide to open, to, to be here, to practice in Dearborn? Simple. I mean, it's a, it's a simple question. I mean, family. I mean, I, in, in my opinion, I don't feel there's another community in the world like our community here. Okay. We're very supportive, and you know, God rest the best family soul. They're a, they're a, a tribute to this. I mean, it's, I've never seen an outpouring of support emotionally in, in 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 our community. People talk about this all around. If you watch the news radio, people are commenting all around the world that Most what a great turnout it is. And that's that's honestly what brought us back here is our community. And I vowed when I went to training is that no matter. You know, we never were taught to chase a dollar. We were never born to say, all right, go make as much money as you can. That's not what we're doing. We're doing this to help people as much as we can. So the the simple answer was, you know, when I was done, I could have made decisions and stayed elsewhere in practice. But however, I chose to come back and give to my community. And that's kind of a, you know, a vow I took before I started my practice. So I come back here to, to, to help the community as much as I could. Just to give them an idea of what you guys do and what's an orthopedic uh, doctor is uh, just give us like a you know background what do you guys do what do you guys practice so back in the day general surgeons took care of everything you know someone came in and broke their hip or broke their bone it used to go to general surgery then a, a field came and said all right well we need to subspecialize and give people more training in this okay. and we did this field the subspecialty in orthopedic surgery and orthopedic surgery is basically a surgeon that operates on the musculoskeletal system so you know bones fractures, ligaments, tendons, rotator cuff tears, meniscus tears, even they have certain subspecialties in orthopedic cancer surgeons. They call them orthopedic oncologists. So there can be cancers in the orthopedic So when there is like, for example, bone tumors. Correct. Right. That's an orthopedic surgeon who okay. takes care of that. So any bone, muscle, tendon, ligament, those are common terms that people injure, bone, muscle, tendon, or ligament. You can put all of those injuries under the umbrella of orthopedic surgery. And then underneath the umbrella, you can differentiate what types of surgeries each mm -hmm. individual does. Like Hassan says that he's a sports physician, so he takes like, care of a lot of injuries that occur in athletic populations, so okay. ACLs, rotator cuffs, even broken bones. Uh, all the while we do other things as well. I do some joint replacements. I replace arthritic joints, so people who have, you know, an elderly population will often have knee or hip arthritis. We take care of that, or shoulder arthritis. We do replacements. We want to dive into some of those yeah. uh, specialties that you guys do, just so we can talk about them like, very briefly. Like we said, Heidi, it's just an intro uh, yeah, to what sure you guys is. do, but in the future, we're going to dive deeper into probably each one of those topics so we can talk about it more and uh, the, complex, the complexity of some of the stuff that you guys yeah, do. Yes, so it's a good question. A lot of people don't know that. A lot of people say, all right, my shoulder is hurting. Who am I going to go see? They're going to go see their primary care doctor, okay. their internist. They don't know you know, where to go. And their internist is like the gatekeeper, so they'll see somebody and refer them to a specialist of that field if needed. So they don't come to you right away. So I want you to go to the primary. Let's say, for example, in, uh, and don't mention a little bit. How do you guys do, like, you know, if the body has disc problems? Yes, yeah, yeah, we have partners who take care of spine problems. But yeah, disc, I mean, we see patients with disc herniations, but somebody has a knee pain, hip pain, elbow pain, shoulder pain. Yeah, the first, like I said, the gatekeepers are usually the primary care physicians. And then the primary care referred them. It depends. That's kind of a complicated case. question because insurance companies nowadays dictate it. Most so there's certain insurance companies that will make you see your primary care doctor to determine if they think you need a referral. Now, other other insurance carriers 
allow the, the insuree or the person with the insurance to make that decision and say, okay, my shoulder's hurting. I want to go see, you know, uh, Hamad or Hassan for my shoulder because they're shoulder specialists. Other people, you know, call me and say, I want to see you for my shoulder. Okay. And their insurance company says, nope, you need a referral from your primary care doctor. When we say when we say shoulder pain, sometimes this be all واحد. I'm عندي shoulder pain. I should go probably to a chiropractor or to a physical therapy. What what kind of a shoulder pain it should be for them to end up coming to a orthopedic surgeon? It's a, it's a matter of what kind of pain you're having. Okay. The tough thing is, the difficult thing is, a lot of time is the diagnosis. Okay. When you have a diagnosis, you, it, the decisions become very easy. A lot of times people don't have the right diagnosis or don't have even a diagnosis okay. to make those decisions. So a lot of people come to us after a referral and they say, I just have shoulder pain. Very okay. rarely do people come and say, I have a rotator cuff tear, or I have glenohumeral arthritis, or I have a meniscus tear. They say I have knee pain. So okay. it's on us to figure that out. And if the patient does need, I mean, we are orthopedic surgeons in nature, so people think surgery, surgery, surgery. But that's, that's not a, I was going to ask you that. But the world, we're going to talk a little bit about Arabic. Yeah, of course. But the listener, for example, is a surgeon. The surgeon says, "No, no, it's a surgery. I want to change something or put something. I don't want to do that." So is it all about surgery, Hassan? Uh, so that's a great question. So first thing that comes right away to the top, especially the Arab, they come to you and say, like, what do you want to do? That's the truth. That's the truth. They come to you and say, the Arab in general from the surgery. So no, I mean, the important thing is we get the person better. Okay. And always, you know, I always say 100% of the time, I mean, 100% of the time, if they do something, they do something, or, you know, they do something, they do something, they do something, they do something, they do something. Awesome. That always, every single time we think like non-surgeons. And that's the way I think you should be. There's a lot of aggressive people in the world, no matter what field you go into, that are a little bit more aggressive. And there's people that are more on the conservative side. Give us give us a case, Dr. Hikashin, so we can put things into uh, common. Uh, so you have a... Uh, uh, like an example. Let's here's say an case example. That happened, for example, one person doesn't want to do an operation. Sure. But they came to you, you guys tried everything, but the surgery was... The, the way to basically to become painless, let's say. So here, here's an example recently. Yeah. I, I took care of a, an athlete who dislocated their shoulder. Okay. And the family came and saw me for the first time, and, and we talked to them about what the literature says or what our studies show about dislocations in younger aged populations. And, of course, you know, initially the family was hesitant to surgery, so I didn't push them to anything. But you give them the risks and benefits of surgical and non-surgical treatment. The family chose non-surgical treatment. Okay. Understanding the risk of a high risk of recurrence of dislocation, high risk of continued problems with, you know, the shoulder popping out of place. Sent them to physical therapy, which we work very closely with physical therapists and other doctors to try to get people better. But the patient showed up in my office three months later with recurrent dislocations or their shoulder kept popping out of place. So at that case, the options are very simple. It's either this is the recommended treatment, now surgeries are our option that we highly recommend, or you continue to deal with the dislocations. Okay. And the patient underwent a shoulder surgery to stabilize the shoulder so it doesn't pop out of place. And alhamdulillah, it's been months in the so patient. So the case that we talked about, Dr. Hassan, this is a case that one had a dislocation in the back of his head. He had a dislocation in the back of his head, because we were talking about the language. He was able to do the work. He came to him, he tried a lot of different ways to do the work, but he didn't have a dislocation in the back of his head. Correct. He did the work, but he did the work, and he started to do the work. He didn't have a dislocation in the back of his head. بالارب خلينا نذكركم حيلا واحد عنده سؤال في اوي ده قلنا على الاستوديو على من ديترويت على 313-769-6666 ومن وينزر كندا على 519-256-1023 او تكتبوا كومنت على الفيسبوك عم يجينا كومنت على الفيسبوك احنا هلا رح نقرا سم اوف ذا كومنتس اللي اجونا اذا عندك شي مشكله بال بال بالني بين او شولدر بين بدك تستفسر عن اي مشكله صحيه عم بتصير معك بالنسبه للخاصه بالبون او بالمسل او بالليجمنت فيكم تدقوا لنا وبحاولوا قد ما فيكم الدكتور هلا يجاوبوا عليهم عليكم بالسؤالات تبعكم ما بياثر اذا سؤالك باللغه العربيه نحن فينا نترجمه للدكتور حسين والدكتور محمد عباس غملوش على فيسبوك عم بيقول لنا جود افترنون دكتور هي ذا بيست دكتور هي جيف مي تو شوتس ان ماي ارم اند ميك مي فيل جود Uh, from two years ago. So say hi to him, please. Thank you, Abbas. Good luck, Zah, Abbas. Uh, we'll try again. Mike Ayoub is saying, uh, these are hands down the best orthopedic surgeons around. They are uh, the experts in their field and their bedside manners are second to none. So thank you, Mike. So this is a good good time to, to talk about please. community. So Go you ahead. have a, a person like, you know, Abbas and Mike Ayoub. And this, this is the reason why we came back to our community. 
because no matter where they go, these are the people that support us in our practice and support what we do. You know, both are very supportive of our practice, and you know, we can only talk so much and because of HIPAA laws. However, they, they, they're very, very, very supportive, whether it's sending family members, sending people, giving us continued support in our community. And, you know, Mike does his own show where he supports the community and says, you know, Mike support Spirits, local. Yeah, yeah my, I mean, Mike's, for example, Mike spoke I think about... he did the interview. He did. He did a nice did interview for us. He did one with me, too. Yeah, so he's, a, he's a good person for that. He did one about a ski shop, and our friends go skiing once a year. And since Mike's interview, we've had, like, seven people go to the ski shop to support wow. that person's ski shop. So, yeah, that's our, you know, our, our, our backbone is support local, support your, your community when you can. That's amazing. Uh, I was going to say there's two points I really want to make. Uh, okay. I want to ask you, but I want to finish this. Because I have a case about my friend. You caught my attention. We'll you caught my attention. We'll I'm going to ask, we'll ask, ask you publicly. No, go Let's go ahead. Uh, so two points I want to make. One about the community and one about the practice. Two common questions we get, especially brothers and the siblings in the community. Mm -hmm. you know, what it took to become where you are. Yeah. You know, it's a common question. You know, people want uh, uh, you know, have hopes and desires for their children. They'll say something. One thing I tell everybody is always, it's hard work, it's sacrifice, it's dedication, it's giving up a lot, and it's, uh, like I said, a lot of sacrifice. And it has nothing to do with the individual. It's not my sacrifice, not my hard work. It's the hard work and the sacrifice of parents. It's the hard work and the sacrifice of a community, of a village. So when the question comes up of why we came back to Dearborn, it's because it wasn't my sacrifice and my hard work and my sleepless nights and my, my trials and tribulations. It was the hard work, sacrifice, sleepless nights, trials and tribulations of a family, of my family, of a community that helped raise us. So when, when it's all said and done, it's easy to just pack up and go somewhere. It's hard to come back and say, I'm going to give back to everybody who gave us everything. So that's A, why we're here. The second thing about when you do come to see us, you know, there's treatment options. And Sam's talking about a shoulder dislocation case. One thing you'll know from the both of us, and when you meet us, you'll know, is that we practice something called evidence-based medicine. If it, if it has not been proven in literature and there's no history to prove a treatment modality, we're not going to use it. It's not something we're just going to figure out on the fly, figure out what we're going to do. If it's in literature and research has proven it to be effective, we will try and we will discuss it, but we don't make a decision for the patients. What I've heard, to be honest, from the research, and what I've heard from people that, you know, I spoke to you about you guys, you guys informed about the decision. Yeah, and you, you, and you, I want to show you educate them about their case, which is very important. And we don't want to be blind about your, your case. Then the best of them show you the case back. We tell them exactly show you the case back. I'm not sad with the doctor. To show him the best, you know, what's, what's going on with your pain. And the other thing is, it's not, not a two choice. One, yeah, you guys give them a couple choices on how to basically go about what they're going through. Of course, and it's based in evidence. If you, if you tell me you've tried something for six months and I tell you, well, the evidence has shown that it's not going to be effective, these yeah. are the other options. But I'll say this, we also, every time we operate, if it comes to the point, we don't take that lightly. Every time we operate on somebody, we, we advance and we, we engage in a relationship that's forever. We don't take those relationships lightly. I think about it. We lose sleep over it. So we don't want to operate on everybody. I know how, what's the concern is when somebody says surgery, you have to go. You know. uh, but what's the success rate when, that you guys have so far? Success, you could track your numbers. I mean, you know, you can track your numbers in terms of joint. There's a lot of joint literature now that's, you know, after a joint replacement, they can connect, correct, collect data and compare you to other surgeons. And they do that at the outpatient or at the inpatient level. At the outpatient level, we do our own, you know, how many patients or Edmund Han come back with an infection, come back with a recurrent dislocation, their shoulder pops out. Alhamdulillah, if you look at our reviews and you talk to people, they're very, very, very low. It's because we use cutting edge techniques. And you talked about informing the patients. A mm -hmm, lot of exactly. times, a lot of times, if, you know, just let me preface by saying, Please someone once told me, you can tell this in Arabic too. So someone told me once when I was training that a good, ner a good surgeon knows how to operate a great surgeon knows when to operate, and the best surgeons know when not to operate. So that's, that goes to the fact that, yeah, go ahead. Yeah. So a good surgeon knows how to operate. Okay. Yeah. A, a, a good surgeon knows when to, uh, how to operate. A great surgeon knows when to operate. <laughs> 
انت لا ما يعمل العمل حبيت يو نو سو وي هاف تو ثينك لوت نوت لايك ا سيرجن سم تايمز بات باك تو اور ثينج از ايفري ون هاز كومبليكيشنز يعني ذس وير نوت بيرفكت ذس از ا وورلد اوف امبرفكشن اند اف ا بيشنت از انفورمد براير تو سيرجري اوف اول ذا بوتنشال ريسكس اند كومبليكيشنز اند ذاتس وات جوز ان تيرمز اوف انفورمينج يور بيشنتس اكيد اي ريمبر وين اي واز ترينينج اند اي ديد ا فيلوشيب ان كليفلاند اند اي سات داون ان ماي فيرست ويك اوف ترينينج اند We were talking, a person came in with a rotator cuff tear in their shoulder. Okay. And the surgeon I was sitting with was talking to the patients and telling the patients, these are the risks. Okay. Risk of one, two, three, four, five, وبلش وكمل. Oh, أنا قاعد عم بتسمع وبقل له بس the patient scheduled surgery وراح. قلت له بدي اسألك سؤال. وأنا جراح وأنا فزعت من the conversation وعم تحكي مع البيشن. كيف ما فزعت البيشن؟ قال لي لا. But in luck, if you're honest with people okay. and you tell them up front what they're going to expect and what their risks are, you will be happier, they will be happier. And بعد من هون الله لا يقدر something happens, they at least can say, you know what, you looked me in the eye and told me that this was a potential complication. They will be less upset with their complication. And this is where I feel like people have a distrust or have a kind of hesitation to proceed because they're not informed. Husband. You know, if I told you eat this dish of food and you had no idea what's in that dish, That's you're going to be a little bit hesitant. And even if it's great, you're not going to give it that much because you don't know. But if I tell you every ingredient and you taste it, you're going to say, I love this. But it's Same also a surgery. mutual decision. It's Correct. not us telling you when we're going to operate. It's you telling us, hey, I think it's time for surgery. After That's you've given all these options, we say we come to this conclusion together. So it's a deci- decision we made together. If something bad happens, you say, well, I mean... Again, we're talking about a very, very small percentage of complications. But when the, if those do occur, it was a decision that was made together, and we both understood those risks. But we like to think and we like to uh, hope that we don't hit those complications. Okay. And the comments are coming from on Facebook. I'm happy to remind you that later on, I'll be back with you. I'm Takira Tra from Detroit. I'm happy to reach out to you at 313-769-6666. 313-769-6666. We're going to be back with you at 519-256-1023. And the question... from Fadia on uh, Facebook. Uh, she's saying, hi doctors, I've been diagnosed with a mild straightening of the normal lumper. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'll do my best. Uh, of the normal lumper lordosis, minimal yeah. grade one retro whatever, so or lumbar five yeah, upon S1. one. Could, could that be healed with a physical therapy? I'm not sure, I know you guys can. Grade one, grade so one. So grade one spondylolisthesis, that means Normally, the bones are stacked up on each other like a block. Okay. A spondylolisthesis means when the bones shift in a certain direction. Usually, they're forward. Okay. And that can cause the disc to slip out. So, the qu- answer to your question is I have straightening of the lumbar lor- lordosis. So, the curvature of the lower back, how it kind of curves in, is kind of a little bit more straight. Okay. Absolutely, 100%, the treatment of choice to that to start is non-operative or non-surgical treatment. In the terms of physical therapy, stretches, anti-inflammatory medicines, Potential escalation after that is to try injections in the back. And last resort is spinal surgery. Okay. And Very there's good. certain things that can be addressed immediately with surgery, but this is one that you can. No, no, this is one. The, even I love how you gave her the time. A hundred percent. Your start was physical always. therapy. Those are choices. If not, always. there is injections. Always. If not, there is uh, basically. Maybe, maybe surgery. surgery. Not even guaranteed. There's another question. Yeah, another question came in. I'm an antisage. Which hospital do you work with? And also, what recommendation do you give to younger people whose parents have inherited arthritis from their parents? So uh, We have great we, questions, and yeah, I'm going to give you guys a very good question. Yeah, we, we, uh, we're BOMA-affiliated physicians, so we can work out of uh, any BOMA hospital. Mm-hmm. Uh, we do a lot of our uh, cases out of BOMA, Dearborn, and Taylor. Uh, we're also privileged at uh, Farmington Hills and uh, Trenton. Okay. But we do uh, some outpatient surgery at the Dearborn Surgery Center as well. Okay. So uh, most of the BOMA facilities is primarily where we work out of. How about um, the second part of her question? The second question? part of inherited arthritis. 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 So the thing about arthritis is arthritis is multifactorial. arthritis <laughs> 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 So arthritis, there's there's some inherited versions of arthritis and there's okay. non-inherited versions of arthritis. Depending on what, uh, what form you have, rheumatoid versus osteo, there's that differentiation. Okay. But arthritis is multifactorial. It could be from an uh, injury. It could be inherited, somewhat inherited. It, I mean, some people have even gone far as say it, it's part of the diet you've had in your life. Too. Well, uh, 
Yeah, there's there's different theories Is out there. Is it proven to be right in the, from the diet? Um, well, the best idea. It's a theory. I mean, it depends on what you read and depends on how, what you subscribe to and which uh, ideology you subscribe to. However, in terms of arthritis itself, there are uh, familial connections to arthritis. Okay. However, depending on where you are in your life, um, if you're not having certain uh, issues with arthritis at some point, it's, it's highly unlikely that you will develop it because your parents had it. You don't, you don't necessarily develop arthritis because your parents had arthritis. So the answer, it's probably not. It's probably not. Arthritis. Osteoarthritis is probably not an inherited, okay. inherited cause. And it runs in families. It can run in families. But the, it's, it's, you know, the knee is, is, a, is a joint that takes a lot of beating like a car motor or a car tire. The yeah. more you use it, the more it's going to wear down. That's 100%. kind of the gist of arthritic the, the question I wanted to ask you about, Doctor, and probably this will be my last question because sure. we even went over time a bit. Sure. Uh, my daughter, she's three years sure. old. Um, she has a twin. Uh, my my, yani my two daughters. Okay. One of them, for example, uh, she was pulling her mm -hmm. sister with her hand, so her shoulder dislocated. She started crying. So her 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 mom, you know, she popped it up inside, mm -hmm. and she stopped crying. Mm -hmm. So, and then again, uh, about two weeks ago, come in, she was, her sister was playing with her, come in, she pushed her hand, uh, too rough probably. Hassayna uh, Mithilhoni came in and popped up a bit. So what could be that? That is, uh, so a three-year-old shoulder dislocation is extremely rare. Okay. I don't what like you're probably, yeah, like what, what, what you're probably yeah. dealing with is either, you know, a semi-shoulder. So your shoulder has a lot of motion. So they okay. probably pulled her shoulder out to an uncomfortable position and stretched okay. the shoulder joint a little bit became uncomfortable for her. So, yeah, because she, she couldn't... Uh, yeah, so what you're it. talking about in the elbow is characteristic for something called nursemaid's elbow. Okay. Nursemaid's elbow is if you feel the top of your elbow kind of... There's a little prominent bone here. It's called the radius. Okay. And sometimes the radius can dislocate because there's a ligamentous issue. I don't want to get too complicated with it. And in kids, it's called the nursemaid elbow, so it pops out. Okay. And then what you do is you try to kind of bring their arm out like this, pull some traction, it pops back in place, and you feel it. Yeah. And it's pretty gratifying, because the kid looks at you like, like, like wow, this is amazing, I feel good. That's very, it's not very common, but it's very characteristic of that age group. Haiti, how do you know, you know, I'm asking the doctor about my daughter, and I thought that there was a dislocation, but I'm telling you, I don't have the children who have three dislocation. Very unlikely. Very unlikely. So, do you know, Haiti, is it changing this situation, or what should we do? Nothing. Live your life normally. It's, I mean, it can recur, very unlikely, but nursemaid's elbow is a, it's characteristic, it's common in that age group, especially for traction, or kids fall, or pulled down by their siblings, but once you pop it back in place, I mean, it's amazing how quick they go back. Yeah, it's like a Kids are resilient. The name is pretty to... cool. It's a nursemaid's elbow. If you know what a nursemaid is, right. and the people used to take care of the kids, and be mm -hmm. so when mm -hmm. they used to pull their arms too fast, used to pop the, the radio head out. But you pop it back in, and they do fine. See, you became an orthopedic surgeon. I said. <laughs> 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 to be honest, we have a lot of questions on Facebook. Uh, Fadia, she it's a follow up. She's like, what if the same diagnosis is accompanied with num numbness? Uh, like so numbness. numbness. So yeah, what, what Fadi is talking back now is there's two problems. Okay. She's having back pain, and now she's describing what we call radicular complaints or okay. problems with the nerve. Okay. So we'd have to Fadia. This is one. It's it's very difficult to diagnose over the the radio. But we'd have to look at the MRI, see the extent of the disc herniation, where the disc herniation is. So there's different parts of the spinal canal where the disc can exit. If she's getting radicular complaints or numbness, tingling, that still I would treat with physical therapy injections. If that fails. Typically, those patients, if they undergo surgery, do better than patients that have had surgery for back pain. Okay. Let's just tell you that Dr. Muhammad and Dr. Hussain Saad are two of them from Michigan Orthopedic Specialist. They have two of them, one in Farmington Hills and one in Dearborn. In Dearborn, the Ayadi is at 21031 Michigan Avenue. 21031 Michigan Avenue. The number of phone is 313 فخلنا نرجع نذكركم دكتور حسين سعد والدكتور محمد سعد أورثوبيريك سيرجنز هني موجودين بميشيغان أورثوبيريك سبيشاليست هني كمان بارت أوف بومنت هالز العيادة موجودة على 21031 ميشيغان أفينيو بديربون حد الترين ستيشن دغري وأرقام التليفونات هي عندهم 313-277-6700 آخر كامت رح أخدها من فيسبوك من سامع إيراني بيقول إكسلنت دكتورز أن هايدي ركومندد أنا هايدي أكتر جمدي استمعت استمتمعت لأي دوي خلينا نكون واضح وصريح أنا كل ما أحكي أسأل أقول لحدا يسألوني مين معك تجوف الجمعة بقول له معي الدكتور حسين والدكتور محمد سعد The only thing I've heard is highly recommended best doctors they're leading in their field يعني شو هالسمعة الحلوة الحمد لله Thank you very much It's a good community
ويعطينا هلا نحن مثل ما قلنا لهم وعدناهم ان شاء الله وي جينا يعني اليوم حاولنا قد ما فينا نعرف عنكم نعرف عن اختصاصكم وات يو جايز دو وير دو يو براكتس اند ذات كايند اوف ستاف ذير از ا مليون توبيك تو توك اباوت يو جايز غانا بي باك يو جايز غانا بي باك سون رح نحكي عن سبورت انجري باك بين شولدر بين اول اوف هيب ريبليسمنت اول اوف ذا ستاف ذات يو جايز براكتس ان ديتيلز لحتى نفيد الجيلي لانه اي نو يو جايز ار انفستينج يور تايم اند يور تالنت سو يو كان بينيفيت the community and enough so thank you for doing that thank you final much. words before we uh before we say bye thank you very much Until for having us and, yeah yeah oh, we'll be back uh thanks for having us here we just you know want to get the word out of what we do and you know we appreciate all the support from our community and um you know we're, we're always welcoming new patients and you know and um we're happy to see any of you in the office any Great. questions will be very detailed with you and answer any questions you have أكيد حيلا واحد عنده حيلا سؤال خصو بالاختصاص تبع الدكتور حسين الدكتور محمد بي فيو نجوا عندنا الأيادي يعملوا كونسلتيشن معهم الأيادي مثل ما قلنا موجودة بديربون على 21031 ميشيغان أفينيو وأرقام التليفونات هي 313-277-6700 أنا بدي أتشكر الدكتور حسين الدكتور محمد وراح يكونوا معنا إن شاء الله بحلقات قادمة لنتحدث عن مواضيع وتوبكس تانيين بس بطريقة مفصلة ومعمقة لحتى نفيد الجالية بالنسبة لهيدي المواضيع فشكرا لكم نحن رح ناخذ بريك كثير قصير بالقسم الثاني رح نتحدث عن التاكس والتاكس ريتيرن والتاكس ريفاندز هل يا ترى بسبب انه الحكومه مسكره هلا الجفرمنت شت داون رح يتاخر الشكات اللي ببعتوه هون اللي هن بنسميهم نحن تاكس ريتيرن ومواضيع ثانيه خاصه بالتاكس رح تكون معنا ندى ان شاء الله بعد الاعلان فخلوكم معنا <تصفيق> المرة بتلاقى حدا بسألنا تابعونا كل نهار ساعة نتناقش ونتحاور ونسلط الضوء على أهم المواضيع اللي بتخصنا كلنا بتجرد موضوعنا برنامج شو الأخبار مع حسين هاشم كل نهار أربعة ساعة ثلاثة على راديو سينا 102.3 FM تابعونا لتعرفوا شو الأخبار آه متابعينا ومستمعينا من راديو سينا 102.3 اف ام نرجع لكم بحلقتنا من آه واتساب شو الاخبار القسم الاول من الحلقه كان معنا الدكتور حسين سعد والدكتور محمد سعد موضوع كثير شيق يعني صراحه لما فتنا بلشنا نفوت بمواضيع الطبيه وسؤالات عن المواضيع الطبيه صار يجينا سؤالات كثير حاولنا قد ما فينا انه نجاوب على هيدي السؤالات بس مثل ما وعدناكم رح يكون معنا حلقات لحتى ان يكونوا معنا الدكتور حسين والدكتور محمد لحتى نتحدث عن هودي المواضيع بتفاصيلها فكمان مثل ما قلنا لكم باول حلقه رح يكون معنا بالقسم الثاني من الحلقه هلا متواجده حاليا معنا ندى عيسى شيزا سي بي اي لحتى نتحدث عن موضوع التاكسز لانه هلا نحن رح نفوت بالتاكس سيزون ومثل ما بتعرفوا كل العالم شغل الشغل لهم هلا هيدا الموضوع ف ندى في صديق تعلي المايك شوي عشان اذا بيرفكت يا ذاتس بيرفكت So welcome to the show. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. No, 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 no. Hello, Sahla. Arfina and Halik Shway, just to introduce you to the uh, listeners and to whoever is watching us on Facebook before we start talking about our topic. Of course. So my name is Nida Isa. Um, I have my company, Nationwide Accounting Firm. I'm a CPA. And um, what my company is, is it's an accounting firm that we work with nationwide. So we can complete taxes for anybody in any state, any city. Um, everything is done through the cloud, so mm-hmm. everything is done um, electronically. Um, we have a virtual office, okay. so anybody who needs anything, they can go onto the website, upload their documents, um, they get their tax return prepared, it gets sent to them on a secure, everything is done securely on, a, uh, on our secure drive. Mm-hmm. They can sign the return electronically and um, even make payment electronically, and as soon as their payment is completed, the return is processed, it makes it easier for the customer. Um, it's made for the convenience of our clients, so that way they don't have to make an appointment, they don't have to go to an office. You know, people are so busy these days, and nobody, nobody has that much time to 
you know, go to these appointments. So we did this for for the customers. هلا نحن حطينا من هذه بعتقد من شيء خمس أمتى حطينا هي كلي وحطيت لي سامد أب أنت لما حطينا tax refunds أرد هي نبي delayed من شيء جمعة حطينا إنه طلع خبر إنه because of the government shutdown, the tax refunds راح يتأخروا. هلا امبارح الوايت هاوس طلع قرار لا انه زي دايركتد ذا اي ار اس انه نو باي ذا تاكس ريتيرن سو واتس ذا ليتست اون ذات؟ يا سو ذا ثيوري واز ذات ذير غونا بي يو نو نو ريفاندز ار غونا بي ايشيود بيكوز ذا غفرمنت شت داون بات ذا وايت هاوس ديد ريليس ا ستيتمنت سين ذات ريفاندز ويل بي ايشيود اند ذا اي ار اس ستيل انتيسيبيتس اوبننج اب تاكس سيزون اون جانوري 28th اوف ذا يو نو اوف ذا اند اوف ذا مانث سو ذاتس وين يو كان يو كان بريبير يور ريتيرن اني تايم بيفور ذن بات ذي ويل بي ابل تو بي ترانزميتد You know, sent to the IRS on the 28th of the month. Okay. And so 28 to be the electronic submission. Yes, you can submit them electronically. However, there might be forms that still have not be re- been released or finalized. Okay. So in the event the form is not released, you know, that's going to just delay it until it does get released. Um, but you know, everyone should still try to complete their tax return before the April 15th deadline, since the deadline has not changed. It's still the same. My hand can be over, but since you know. Probably the Vienna extended, so there is nothing to about. Extended. As of right now, no. It's no. April 15th is the deadline. Okay, um, so it seems like we should have tax return. So not careful. Yes, <laughs> tax return is. Um, they said they're going to issue refunds. How quick the turnaround is going to be? Aye. They didn't really, you know, they didn't say. So if you know, usually it used to be. Within like two weeks, if you do it electronically. So, but Apple, can the taxes usually take a month and you sell like. Yeah. Masari, is it going to be from? Is it going to be from those that are going to be from Masari? Exactly. We're going to pay them. في كتير عالم بس يجي تاكس سيزون بكيفوا بتلاقيهم مبسوطين ناطرين ومناطره فاهمين كيف؟ وفي عالم مثلنا بيسبوا الساعه اللي يجي كل تاكس سيزون. They don't look forward to it, yeah. فا زائد ندى في عالم انا يعني مش بعرفهم يعني بس في عالم سمعان انه ما بيعبوا تاكس What happened to those people who don't file tax? So the IRS audits, if they are required to file tax, and they don't. So there's some people that don't need to file taxes if you know their income is very low or you know they have exempt income that doesn't need to um, doesn't require a tax return to be filed. But if you do need to file a tax return and you don't, who needs to file a tax return? Let me ask it in another way. Anna. Who needs to file a tax so return? So if you make an income, okay. if you make any money, even like if it's um, you know. A hobby income, for example, that all needs to be reported to the IRS. So even. Hala lately, fiktir, for example, businesses in Belshin on social media. I mean, like you're doing something, for example, ah, you have a business on social media. Hal ya tula how do they need to come in to abu on taxes? Yes. Okay. Hal ya tula the age be affected? I mean, let's say, for example, one person has a child who is 13 or 14 years old. Hal ya tula the age be affected? Or the or the. She should file, or her parents should file. So. Okay. هلا نحن اعطينا سوري اعطينا ايك اكزامبل بيكوز امه امه معنا بالوقت اه دونت وري اي امل انا اي بضلني وراها امل يو نيد تو ميك شور ذس ذس اي ميك شور ذات شي هاز ايفري ثينغ سو لانه كثير عم يستمعونا كثير موضوع مهم اللي عم يستمعونا على الفيسبوك ولا اللي عم يستمعونا على على الراديو في كثير شباب وصبايا انا بعرفهم يعني اسم الله عليهم كثير شاطرين وبلشوا بزنسز حتى يعني كبار بلشوا يعني مثل بعرف امهات بيطبخوا طبخات وهيك وبيبيعوها على السوشيال ميديا وهيك هل يا ترى هودي لازم يعبوا تاك؟ يس Okay. حتى لو مش عاملين بزنس يعني حتى لو هن they don't claim يعني ما عندهم يعني they didn't file for a business but was Lara yeah uh, well it's not it's not necessary it's better to file the business but um if you do have some income and you don't you can also fi- you can file as a sole proprietor meaning and I can just use my name to run the business okay. as long as you're making income it does need to be reported to the IRS so yeah anyone who is making any kind of income okay um فإذا عمر الواحد تحت تحت أي سن لازم يعبي مع أهله إذا بسموه أنتو independent. Well, what they would do is they would file a return, okay. uh, and then they can have their parents claim their. Well, now there's no more exemptions, but in the past they were able to have their in, uh, parent claim their exemption. Okay. So um, yeah, they can file under their own name. Very good. Well, nice, nice, nice. That. That. Let's say you made income, and uh, you have a you have a business or AK, but you're not filing taxes. Is there a penalty to... or is there a legal issue with that? Uh, yes, you end up getting most likely end up getting audited. Um, okay. You know, I assist clients all the time with things of this nature where they're getting audited by the IRS. If you don't submit something to them, the IRS is automatically gonna come up with a number that they you know that they say that you pretty much made. Like, hey, you didn't file. This is what was reported to us. You made such and such amount. 
either file show us you know how much you did make okay. or you're gonna have to pay taxes but they don't know how I'm working and I'm making money how would they know how would the IRS know well technology is so advanced now that like if you if you run your credit card transaction you know if you have a credit card machine that is going to report it to the IRS the credit card companies are reporting everything that you make to the IRS as far as its credit card Um, cash, you know, it's uh, it's just if you're basically being honest. Um, if you're depositing that cash into your bank account, you know, those bank account statements can be subpoenaed. They, you know, so this just there's things that they if they actually like look into it and dig into it, they should they will be able to find out. Um, as far as credit card and things of that nature, cash, like I said, if you make the deposits, but usually, you know, people that deal with cash, it's again it goes. back to you being honest you being okay, you able to tell them what you made ma wadu aktir shay aktir muham ana i'm i'm learning from you right now fa alhayla wahad ando hayla soal khassu bil bil hisabat wa bil tax season wa hayla soal khassu bi al mawdu li nahna am nnaqshu haliyan ma nada nada shi cpa shi she has a lot of knowledge about that topic so feel free to to call and ask about whatever you want to ask about adma fina rah nhawal njawab ala sawalatkum kanu ala facebook whoever is watching us on facebook if you have any question feel free to uh, put the question in the comment box al safha tabana ala facebook hi whatsapp media network bas tikat bi whatsapp media network bi talakum al safha nahna hala bi masba mubashir hawnike kaman nahna mawjudin ala safhat al tawassul ijtimai mithl twitter mithl instagram kaman tikat bi whatsapp media network bi talakum الويب سايت تبعنا المجدد هلا عندنا واحد بس مش الاخبار بس عم نطلع واحد هلا قريبا رح يطلع one of top of the line website was a library of all of the video and all of the productions that we've done ان شاء الله it will be up soon وكمان عندنا يوتيوب شانل فاللي بحب يتواصل معنا من ديترويت ارقام التليفونات هي 313-769-6666 313-769-6666 ومن وينزل كندا على 519-256-1023 ربما هدوء عنا ندى Tax season is coming up. It's going to open up in 28, so you can submit them. Mm-hmm. What should you prepare before going into uh, the office of a CPA or an accounting? Sorry, or if you upload it. Um. <laughs> or if you upload it <laughs> with you. And I want to go to Smaal, really. Oh, really? No, I've never done it. Oh. oh. Electronically. Yeah. Well, maybe you will this year. Inshallah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Inshallah. Um, what you need is basically, of course, your W-2. Um, if you run a business, you're going to need your income and your expense statements. Um, you know, basically, you can have, like, an Excel file or if you have your bank statements. Um, anything that comes in, if you have your prop, you're going to need your property tax statement for Michigan. You are going to need um, anything if you paid tuition, if you went to college, your tuition statement 1098T will come in the mail, mortgage interest statement. So I'll, I, I always tell my clients, anything that comes in the mail that you are iffy about or you don't know for sure if you need to bring it in or upload it, just bring it in or upload it so that way you know you're it's better to have too much information than not enough information maybe me maybe me so كل شيء بس in general يعني كل شيء expenses انت دافعون وكل شيء income انت عامله جيبه معك لعند المحاسب لحتى يقدروا يساعدوك بهذا الموضوع اذا بدك حط السماعات ندى عشان تسمعي هلو مين معنا على الهواء تفضلوا هلو السلام عليكم يا هلا وعليكم السلام مين معنا انور يا اهلا وسهلا انور تفضل عندك سؤال نعم عندي سؤال ممكن اسال سؤال تفضل من شان التاكسز و اي تفضل اللي اللي عنده قبل وياخذ الاس اس اي ممكن اعطي احد الاس اس اي ونحصل على ريتيرن تاكس باك اوكي سو اس اس اي از اكزامبت فروم تاكسز سو You don't need to file a return for SSI unless it goes over a certain threshold amount, which many people for SSI don't meet. Um, if you do, however... Uh, What's the threshold for SSI? It's, so it depends on your if you're married filing separate or if you're, I mean, right. married jointly. So it just depends on your situation. But the um, majority of the time, it's going to be exempt. Okay. A lot of, I do have clients that do take SSI that do file because they want to take advantage of their property tax refund check. Okay. So even though nothing will come back for the, from the IRS, you can still get something back if you did pay property tax or if you rented um, for the, from the state of Michigan. تمام أنور مش الحال جاوب على سؤالك ولا عندك سؤال غير هيدا؟ يعني لا بس لأنه هو ال ال الأساسي بيستلمه تبع ابني تيز تشايل طفل يعني عم 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 ذا ريبي فور يعني أنا المسؤول عنه بس معناته إنه You can you should add it onto your return so it will show there's a spot for it. Okay. It's showing that it's exempt. It's going to show that it's there, but it won't be added to your total income. So still claim it, but 
You don't so have to worry about it. I'll tax return to back Anwar, but I'm not going to get as part of your income. I'm not going to get income that you're going to get. Okay. اوكي شكرا لك ثاني سؤال ثاني يعني ايفرثينج از اوكي يعني اسال سؤال يلا على السريع لانه ما في معنا وقت انا ولا عندنا مكتوب ما في تغير اوكي ما في حاجه تغيرت لو سمحت مش هالتركس هلا رح نحكي اذا في شيء شيء تغيرت من هذيك السنه لهي السنه هلا رح نحكي نحن على هالتركس خليك تسمع علينا انور تفضل معنا كمان سؤال على الهواء تفضلوا الو وطي صوت الراديو مدام شوي اذا ممكن الو مرحبا يا اهلا وسهلا مين معنا؟ اه اه سمر يا اهلا وسهلا تفضل سمر آه انا عندي سؤال بس انا بدي اعمل ابلاي لجوب اوكي هاي اول مره اوكي آه انا ما عندي بالمره انكم ما عندي تاكس ما عملت يعني ولا مره أوكي. هل انا بالابلكيشن في وراء انه اذا عامله تاكس بتعبيون ولا 2018 آه جوزي حاطتني معه على التاكس بس حتى بعد ما عبى ل 2018 اوكي آه شو بعمل بعبي الوراء هول او بقول لهم الجوب انه بعد ما عندي انا تاكس ولا شيء ام اف يو ستيل ديدنت فايل يو كان ليت ذيم نو ذات يو ديدنت فايل يت Um, but if he puts you on it, you're considered being filed. So. هلا أنتو هو جوزك بيعبي ميريت فاين جوينتلي بيحطكم مع بعض. yeah بحط معه أنا. إيه فأنت بتعتبري إنه أنت عم بتعبي كم سنة actually. so فيك تقدمي هودي تبع اللي معبيين already يعني. آه. شفت أنا عندي خبرة بالموضوع شوية إنه من خلال شغلي. ففيك تعبي أكيد. فيك تقدمي هودي أنت معبيون جوزك ب 2017 أو إذا بعد هلا عبى ب 2018 فيك تقدمي هودي تبع 2018. اه اوكي ثانك يو يا اهلا وسهلا شكرا على okay. سؤالك بعد عندنا تقريبا شيء ثلاث دقائق يعني بدنا نحاول قد ما فينا قلت لي انت يو روت ان ارتكل اباوت سم اوف ذا تشينجز يا فيك تقلي اوف اباوت سم اوف ذا تشينجز اللي تغيروا من هذيك السنه لهالسنه في شو اللي تغير؟ يس سو اف يو جو اون تو ماي ويب سايت www.nationwideaccountingfirm.com and you click on blogs mm. there's a very comprehensive article and i simplified it so the average reader can be able to understand it okay. and it has it has a lot of tables that basically See show 2017 you know what the rules were and then هلا عم يسمونا ما نمشي على الراديو ما نمشي على الويب سايت هلا فبشكل مسرع شوي عندنا اتصال رح ناخده بس بشكل كثير مبسط شو هن الشغلات اللي تغيرت من هذيك السنه لهالسنه بشكل سريع لحتى ناخذ اتصال so a lot of things changed so um, the tax brackets changed the percentage changed they went down majority of them by like 2% Um, the child tax credit change. So. هيدا أكثر شيء بهمون على هيدي فخليني جاي هيدي شوي هلا بسألك عنها تفضل من معنا على التليفون. لا. طيب جاد قلنا سوري نقطع الخط معك مع إنه نضطر نخش كتير يعني ها. فدقلنا أو دقيلنا إذا الوحدة. The tax credit شو كان وشو صار؟ لأنه بهمون هيدا الصار. Tax credit هو إذا عندك أولاد أدش بيطلع لك على كل ولد مثل ما بفهموه عنا بالجالية هذا الموضوع. Yes. So in uh, 2017, the tax credit was $1,000 per child. Mm. So um, that increased this year to $2,000 per child. No, but... <laughs> yes. Alhamdulillah. <laughs> but um, oh, $1,400 of it is refundable, meaning you can actually get $1,400 of it back in your check. Um, and uh, the rest of it is non-refundable, meaning if you owed tax, it would, it would lower your taxes by the amount. Oh, wow. Um, however, I know people are getting excited, you know, they think like, oh, they get more. <laughs> exactly. Um, that went, you know, it just, they made also changes to um, other calculations. So you may make a little bit more or you may, it may even stay the same or make, you know, it, it's just, it's, 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 بيحسبوهم من ضمن هودي انت اللي بيو اون ذا ندى بشكل سريع شو هن سم اوف ذا ميستيكس انت اللي شفتيهم العالم عم تعملهم لما عم بيعبوا على التاكسز جست بيسكلي يو نو ا لوت اوف بيبل جيت ذير سبيلينج اوف ذير اون نيم كوركت بس ذير سبيلز اند ذير ديبندنس سم تايمز ذي دونت هاف ام كوركت شو اذا الاسم مكتوب غلط بياثر على التاكس يس تاكس اند سم تايمز ذي هاف ذا سوشيال سكيورتي نمبرز فليب فلوبت اوكي ام ديت اوف بيرث سو ذاتس اول فيري امبورتنت هاز تو ماتش ذا سوشيال سكيورتي شو بيصير اذا هن عملوا شيء غلط لانه هو عم بيعبوا شو بيصير ال جيت ريجكتد بيرفضوه هون وهل يطلع عندهم تشانس لحتى يرجعوا يعبوا ولا كيف شو بيصير هون؟ اوه يا اوف كورس يو هاف ذا تشانس يو هاف تو فايل سو ايفن اف ات جيتس ريجكتد يو نو وي ادفايز اور كلاينتس ايفن اف يو هاف ذا سند ان ذا ميل بيبر فايل بس a lot of the times there'll be something between the IRS and the Social Security Administration that doesn't match so they have to get that situated which can take weeks before they can e file again so that's why we say you know while you're working on correcting the issue make sure you file you know paper file in the meantime to be honest هذا الموضوع بده حلقة كاملة وبده تكملة
قريبا ان شاء الله يا رب اذا بتحبي ان تكون معنا قريبا كمان اهلا وسهلا فيك ترجع تكوني معنا على راديو شو لحتى نتحدث عن الموضوع لانه انا عندي 100 100 120 الف سؤال بعد <تصفيق> عن هيدا الموضوع فان شاء الله قريبا بتكوني معنا لانه التاك سيزون هلا يعني من هلا من جانيوري 28 لابريل 15 ابريل 15 يعني ففيكي لك تشانس ترجع تيجي معنا انا بدي لكم اليوم انا عندي محاضره بالمتحف العربي بدعوه من الديربون اوبن مايك والمنتدى الثقافي العربي لنتحدث عن الشباب العربي والتحديات والنجاحات اللي حققوها المحاضره حتكون على الساعه 7 بالميوزيوم بدي اتشكر ضيوفنا اللي كانوا معنا اليوم الدكتور حسين ومحمد سعد بالقسم الاول من ميشيغان اورثوبيدك سيرجري اللي هن موجودين على 21031 ميشيغان افينيو رقم التليفون 313-277-6700 بدي اتشكر ندى عيسى اللي هي سي بي اي اللي كانت متواجده معنا كمان تحدثنا عن موضوع التاكسز وكان ان شاء الله بتكون معنا قريبا آه وبدي اتشكركم كلكم اللي كنتوا عم تحضرونا وعم تسمعونا على طول تابعونا على واتساب ميديا نتورك ان كانوا على صفحات التواصل الاجتماعي ولا على الفيسبوك ولا على شيء كان معكم حسين هاشم الى ان نلتقي الجمعه الجايه الى اللقاء انا على الارض عم تخلصها <تصفيق>